baby torturer and murderer, Thomas is the commander of post 12226. Maybe this is why a lot of people thought putting a VFW post into prison was a bad idea. In October of 2023, almost a year ago now, a special VFW post was opened. The Platte River VFW post 12226. Boy, over 12,000 posts. Good job, VFW. Now, post 12226 is out of Sterling, Colorado, but this VFW post, oh, it's not like any other VFW post because it's out of the Sterling Correctional Facility in Colorado. That's right, the VFW is hurting for members so bad that they're going to prison in order to try and recruit veterans, not talking about the guards, talk about the criminals, to join their ranks, to join our ranks. I'm not a part of the VFW right now. <sighs> and this, would sway me away from that. Now, right off the rip, the post started a little bit of controversy, all right? Rightfully so, I would think, right? And I'd have to say, it's probably not hard to be involved in a little bit of controversy when the people in the VFW post in prison are convicted murderers <laughs> and <laughs> But before we get into who's in it and their charges, a word from this video's sponsor. Fume. We all have bad habits. Mine is yelling at strangers on the internet, but don't let your bad habits control your life. What if I told you there's a more enjoyable way to kick some of your bad habits? Well, that's why there's Fume. Fume is an award-winning flavored air device. You draw it in through your mouth, but don't worry, there's no harmful vapor or nicotine, no toxic chemicals, and it's battery-free. Fume fills a void that sometimes a bad habit leaves. And with its many different varieties of flavored air cores, <laughs> Fume could be the spice of life. Variety is, but for here I'm using fume as the spice of life. But some of my personal favorite flavors are crisp mint or orange vanilla, black licorice, spearmint ice, and even cinnamon hearts. Ooh. Fume has served over 300,000 customers, and you could be the next success story. For a limited time, use my code ANGRYCOPS to get yourself a free fume topper. It is the perfect accessory to your fume device. Slip it onto the mouthpiece for a warm, softer feel. It's chewable for those of you that grind your teeth a little bit, and it's reusable. Just head to tryfume.com slash angrycops. That's tryfume.com, T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com slash angrycops. Or scan the QR code to get yourself a free fume topper with your order of the Journeyman Pack today. All right, let's meet the founder of the VFW Post 12226 and the Sterling Correctional Facility. Well, it's State Commander Carol Thomas. Now, Carol here has gone a long history. 37 years she served in the Navy. That is very respectable. She also happens to be a captain in the Colorado Correctional Facility. And one day she looked around at all these felons and said, you know what would give you guys something fun to do while you're killing time? Killing, <laughs> get it? Cause that's what you're here for. It would be to be in a VFW post, start it up. That way the VFW here in Colorado can collect dues from you and you know, get our pockets kind of fat. And now I say that because, well, I'm not just some sort of cynical asshole on the internet who likes to call out bullshit. Because if your heart was in the right place and you wanted to assist veterans and getting out and reconnecting with society, some sort of rehabilitation so then when they're out they get a job or they can work at a VFW. Well, all that sounds great and I would support it, but a large number of the people that are running the VFW in prison are in for life. So what's the point? We're just, we're giving crims fun time now? Is that what this is? They're not in prison to, you know, pay for the injustice that they did? You know, taking the lives out of people, touching kids and such. No, we've got, we've got to give them more fun time there, Captain. I mean, State Commander Carol of the VFW. But she wasn't alone. There were other people in Colorado VFW programs that thought that this would be a good idea, like previous, VFW Department of Colorado Commander John Keane, who presided over the institution, <laughs> institution of VFW Post 12226. And just so we're not confused here, let me quote Keane. Our motto is no one does more for veterans. Keane said, there are no qualifiers in them. It just says vets. In my mind, a veteran is a veteran. Unless he's deep in your child, Keane, then that guy who's your kid, well, then I would say that you get to lose a little bit of that veteran status. 
His DD-214 might say honorable, but his actions would say otherwise. What kind of brotherhood or sisterhood is the VFW when your brothers and sisters are out there stabbing, killing, and f***ing folks? And there are no qualifiers in that? Let me tell you something. Let me show you something. There should absolutely be a qualifier, Keen, you big, beautiful, large-hearted, but somewhat retarded guy. If you're out there grabbing kids, children, little children's like under the age of 10 off the street and then <laughs> yeah maybe maybe you shouldn't be a part of the vfw by the way there are vfws out there where if their commanders get a little too drunk at the bar they're like hey listen you've got a problem we need you to step down oh but not this vfw no it's almost like a point of pride to say how many teardrop tattoos you got tattooed on your cheek and how many bodies you've been poking in the freaking quad now the vfw article says the vfw post 12226 offers members a chance to give back to their communities through outreach and fundraising i don't know how much money they're fundraising we get extra bags of cheetos from the commissary and giving them to kids oh god keep them away from kids keep them away from the kids and what community are they outreaching to they're they're literally locked up their community is a community of felons, murderers. What are we doing here? All of that brings us here now, okay? We've got the Colorado Corrections Captain, also a commander in the Colorado VFW, creating a VFW post in a prison, which isn't really gonna help rehabilitate anybody because most of these guys are in for life. Following that, the then commander of all of Colorado VFWs, Mr. Keen, it's like, this is a great idea. Just because you're in prison doesn't stop your veteran status, which I might disagree with. And now we're gonna talk about the people that are inside VFW Post 12226 at the Sterling Correctional Facility in Colorado. <sighs> oh my gosh. I hope you're ready to write some angry letters to your congressman. Let's hear from Chuck Garlic real quick. He's a member in the post. What has Chuck got to say? It would be nice if we could do something to make a change, not just for veterans who are incarcerated, but for veterans as a whole. There's a clear connection between PTSD, substance abuse, and criminal behavior in a lot of cases. It would be great to be able to shed some light on that. PTSD? Is that what got you here, Chuck? Well, let's figure out what got Charles down here in incarceration land. Charles Garlic killed a 48-year-old man in 2009 by shooting him in an alley with an AR-15. Don't know why that happened, but I will say this. Of all the people in here, Mr. Garlic is the only one I think that should be allowed to participate in a VFW. Why? I'll explain. Because he admitted that he killed the guy. Oh, he admitted that he was sorry. Oh, he told the police that he made a mistake. He owned up to it. Integrity. Now I know. He killed a guy, um, not a good look. But if somebody's willing to take the next step into fixing themselves, I don't think he's gonna get out anytime soon, but that person, Mr. Garlic, could be a turd we can polish. Okay, I mean, if there's somebody that's in for six years because he sold some dope, or a person that was doing, you know, burglaries or robberies because they had a freaking drug habit, I could understand. Let's rehabilitate those people. There's ways we can save them. But unfortunately, Mr. Garlic is, well, I'll just say the nicest guy in post 12226. Let's move on. Well, we've met one of the members. Let's start at the top and work our way down. Post Commander Thomas Stewart. Hey, fella, what are you in here for? Well, Thomas here was arguing with an 18 month old because I don't know, they didn't want to eat their snacks or go to bed and he was like, all right, you know what I should do instead? I'm gonna take this 18 month old's face and I'm gonna slam it into the tile floor. Hmm, wow, great guy. And then, well, he says the 18 month old then fell down nine carpeted stairs. And after calling an ambulance and having the child taken to the hospital, unfortunately the 18 month old passed away. But that's not the end of the story. You see, the child didn't fall down. No, Thomas, this is what Thomas did. Thomas took his girlfriend's 18 month old kid and smashed its face into the tile floor, bruising the side of its face and its forehead. So multiple times, Thomas took an 18 year old soft, subtle face and smashed it into tile flooring, enough to really bruise and, mm, well, dent the kid's head. Oh. But that's not all. You see, while at the hospital, the child was found to have bleeding in the retina, 
Dang. A blood clot in the brain. Oh, geez, from falling downstairs. And torn brain tissue. So in layman's terms, Thomas here, once again, took an 18 month old child of which was not his, his girlfriend's, smashed its head into the freaking pavement a couple of times in the home, and then shook the baby so hard that it tore brain tissue in the kid. Now, on top of that, there was also scalding marks found on the child. And while Thomas said, oh yeah, I splashed hot water on the baby's button. That was it, you know, and I took care of it. Well, doctors would say, no, this baby was intentionally put in boiling, scalding hot water. So, baby torturer and murderer, Thomas is the commander of post 12226 in prison. Good job, VFW. But we're just starting at the top here. Let's go down to our junior vice commander, Richard Moreau. Oh yeah, he's not creepy looking. Well, what did Richard do? Well, he walked into a bar and shot four people. One of which was the doctor that was trying to help the people that were shot, the other three. And he just, you know, executed them and never apologized for it. Instead, he blames all the people that were in there. And when people went to go get a psychological evaluation on him in the middle of court and stuff like that, they said, no, he's totally, he's okay. He might be blaming all this on PTSD, but no, he's just a horrible narcissist. And the judge even said, you have zero regret in doing any of this. That's right. The judge at the end of Richard's trial looked at him and said, you are an unapologetic, manipulative piece of shit. You, are you belong in prison. One of the witnesses to Richard's shooting says that while he was reloading, he was smiling, loving every minute of it. And transport personnel, when moving Richard back and forth for different arraignments and hearings, said that while in transit and passing the sand bar, which is the bar that he killed that guy in and shot several others in, Richard said, hey, how about we all get a drink at the sand bar and made some other, I would say, off color remarks joking about how he shot and killed people in the sandbar. Wow, no integrity, a narcissist murderer who is not apologetic for the people that he killed. We'll make him vice junior commander. Good job, VFW. Let's meet another member, Ryan Kruger. Hey there, Ryan, how are you? What's Ryan in here for? Well, Ryan was selling drugs at a local college and a young lady about 19 years old was buying some weed and ecstasy from him so she could sell it to her friends and party a little hardy there in college. And well, that's not something you should do, young lady. And Ryan here, well, he got a little paranoid one day and thought that the 19 year old female was snitching on him, talking to the police. So what did he do? Well, Ryan here brought himself and a couple buddies to grab this 19 year old female and murder her for the potential that she might be a snitch. Awesome, a drug dealing murderer, a 19 year old girl. Wow, just starting her life out even though she was, you know, selling a little bit of MDMA to her friends in college. <sighs> we should definitely kill her, right Ryan? He should be in the VFW. I can understand. He just got upset that he was about to get his business all torn down. That's why he killed a 19 year old college student. Good job, VFW. Let's meet post service officer, Brandon Allen. Come on everybody, post service officer. What did Brandon do? Well, Brandon here made a little bit of a whoopsie by breaking into a Colorado school teacher's home and <laughs> her for three hours. He tied her up beat her, suffocated her with the pillow numerous times, repeatedly <laughs> her and told her he was gonna kill her for over three hours. Burglary, kidnapping, unlawful imprisonment, <laughs> torture, oh, this guy, this guy should definitely get a second chance. Good job, VFW. Oh, and I've saved the best for last. Everybody welcome the post quartermaster Timothy Alberts. Yeah, wow. Ugh. Well, back in 1982, he served a little bit of time for a child. Oh, well, that was back in 1982. Oh, but somebody did it again in 1989. Yeah, 1989. Decided to f another kid. Got caught for that. But Timothy Alberts here is a changed man. Just because he f a child in 1982 and got arrested for it, and then another child in 1989 and got arrested for it, doesn't mean he's a bad person, even though his most current charges are because he and his brother had mounds and mounds of child 
and children's underwear all throughout his home. A twice convicted child <laughs> and children's underwear in his house. Wow, these are some stellar people. Good job, VFW. Good job. And here we are, thanking the VFW for its brilliant idea to allow a child abuser and murderer, a murderer, uh -huh. oh, a psychopathic murderer with zero conscience, a guy who likes to break into houses, torture <laughs> women, great, and a <laughs> who two kids and then got caught with a boatload of child <laughs> kids underwear. Mmm, wow. So there you have it. The VFW wants all these guys and their charges in the VFW. These are paying dues members, whatever the frig you wanna call them. If I happen to be a post commander of a VFW somewhere, I think I would raise hell and say, these sycophants don't represent me and we don't want them in our brotherhood. Anywhere near our kids. You know what I think I'll do? I think I'll leave a link so that you can write a quick little email to the VFW and let them know how you feel about this. I'll also put a bunch of links down below so you can read each of these guys' stories and maybe send it to the VFW while you're writing that little nasty email to them, telling them, is this really what you want? Once again, I like most of the VFW. I like people in the VFW. I think if the VFW wanted to start a VFW, in a correctional facility, it should be able to assist people that will eventually get out into the public. Work programs, making sure that they've got a job, rehabilitation, giving them a community so if they were involved with drugs, they don't fall back into that and then become once again trapped in the cycle of drugs, arrest, prison, drugs, arrest, prison. But this isn't where you start. Probably don't want to start with the guys that are diddling kids. Best way to support the channel is to buy yourself a shirt. E4 Mafia shirts. Everybody loves E4 Mafia. Everybody loves Crack House. Cheapest way to support the channel is to leave a comment. What do you think about this? Hmm? Hmm? Who's your favorite felon, huh? Out of these guys. Who is your favorite example of what should not be allowed in the VFW or why you shouldn't have a VFW in a prison? Hmm? Which one's your favorite? Is it the 18 month old baby smasher? Oh, I sure really do not like him. He is on my top of not favorite people. All right. See you next time, weirdos. This Old Crack House, a new episode is coming out this month. Get ready. This Old Crack House, it's almost done. And I've got a whole bunch of videos. It's going to be like freaking half an hour, 45 minutes long.